Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 23rd of April. COVID-19 growth linear, not exponential, says Indian government. Doctors in Pakistan urge government to reimpose mosque restrictions. And Bangladesh garment factories switch gears, produce PPE amid coronavirus demands. And now for all the details. Indian government on Thursday said the novel coronavirus growth has been linear, not exponential, adding that the government has been able to cut COVID-19 transmission and minimize its spread in 30 days of nationwide lockdown. Total COVID-19 positive cases in India rose to 21,393, including 16,454 active cases on Thursday. With 1,409 new cases and 41 deaths reported in the last 24 hours, India's total number of COVID-19 positive cases reached 21,393 on Thursday, said India's Health Ministry. The total number of cases includes 16,455 active cases and 681 deaths. As many as 4,257 people have been cured or discharged so far. Addressing a pressure on current COVID-19 situation in the country, Joint Secretary of India's Health Ministry Love Agarwal said that during the coronavirus-induced lockdown in India, the COVID testing increased 24 times, while the number of new positive cases grew 16 times. Chairman of Government's Empowered Committee on Containing the COVID Disease in the country, C.K. Mishra, Chairman of Government's Empowered Committee on Containing the COVID-19 Disease, said India has been able to consistently ramp up its testing. In March, we had 14,915 tests in the country. On the 22nd of April, we have done more than 5 lakh tests. If you do a rough calculation, it is about 33 times in 30 days. But we are conscious of the fact that this is not enough and we have to continuously go move ahead and ramp testing in this country. Meanwhile, Indian shares rose in line with Asian markets on Thursday as oil prices recovered from a collapse earlier in the week while hopes of a new stimulus package to mitigate the economic damage caused by the coronavirus outbreak lifted sentiment. In Eastern Pakistan, with the arrival of the holy month of Ramadan, during which congregations increase in size, doctors in Muslim-majority Pakistan have warned government that the spread of coronavirus could spiral out of control in the country. The doctor asked authorities and clerics to reverse the decision to allow prayer congregations at mosques during Ramadan. Doctors in Pakistan have urged the government and clerics to reverse the decision to allow prayer congregations at mosques during the upcoming holy month of Ramadan, warning that the spread of coronavirus could spiral out of control. Pakistan on April 18 lifted precautionary restrictions on congregational prayers. The decision came days after clerics said such limitations were not acceptable and after several incidents of clashes between police and worshippers. Congregations increased in size during Ramadan, which is expected to begin on Friday in Pakistan. Our government has made a wrong decision. And our scholars have made a wrong decision. इसका मुजाहरा किया है इंसान की जान से खेलने का मुजाहरा किया गया है हमें जिस तरह से जिस तरह से ओलमा हमें गाइड करते हैं इस्लाम के पॉइंट ऑफ़ व्यू से ये लड़ाई कोरोना वर्सेस डॉक्टर्स पैरामेडिकल स्टाफ है समझने की जरूरत the doctors also claimed coronavirus facilities in Karachi, the largest city in the country, has already reached maximum capacity. They said at this rate, medical facilities would face difficulties in coming days and patients would have to be denied admission because there would be no beds. The COVID-19 facilities in this time, the serious facilities in this time, the serious facilities in this time, the serious facilities in this time, 
मैक्सिमम कैपेसिटी पे ऑलरेडी आ गई हैं जबकि अभी ये मर्ज ने पीक नहीं किया है अभी हम जो ग्राफ के इस तरफ है उल्टे हाथ पाकिस्तान दी वर्ल्ड सेकेंड मोस्ट पॉपुलर मुस्लिम कंट्री आफ्टर इंडोनेशिया हैज रिपोर्टेड मोर देन टेन थाउजेंड केसेज ऑफ कोरोना वायरस इंक्लूडिंग टू हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व डेथ्स बोथ दी गवर्नमेंट एंड एक्सपर्ट से द पीक फॉर द इन्फेक्शन इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू हिट इन मे Pakistan based terror group Jamaat ud Dawah's top man Sayyad Samir Bukhari has been arrested in Bagh city of Pakistan administered Kashmir for running a prostitution ring JUD is the front organization for the Lashkar-e-Taiba which is responsible for carrying out the 2008 Mumbai attacks that killed 166 people Pakistan based terror group Jamaat ud Dawah's or JUD top man Sayyad Samir Bukhari has been arrested in Bagh city of Pakistan administered Kashmir for running a prostitution ring. Police arrested him a day after a video went viral showing Bukhari in a compromising position with women visiting his office in Bagh. Bukhari runs Al Mahfiz Foundation, a subsidiary of JOD, a banned terrorist outfit headed by Mumbai terror attacks mastermind Hafiz Saeed. Bukhari was reportedly running a sex racket in the name of a blood bank and also engaged in organizing anti-India protests in the region at the behest of Pakistani military. Reacting to this development, activist Amjad Ayub Mirza said there should be complete crackdown on JOD who is responsible for instigating violence in the region. Jamaat ud Dawah ka kaam hi ye hai ki number 1 वो पाकिस्तान और बिलखसूस पाकिस्तानी मकबूजा जम्मू कश्मीर के जो नौजवान हैं जो बच्चे हैं उनके जहनों को इस्लामिक जहादी नजरिए से उनके जहनों को परागंदा करे जहरीला करे जो पाकिस्तानी फौज के ऑफिसर्स पी ओ जे के में तैनात हैं स्टेशन है वहां उनको हमारी बहनों और बेटियों को as a prostitute pesh kare unki ayashi ke liye Samir Bukhari's arrest exposed JOD's yet another criminal gang operating in Pakistan administered Kashmir in the name of humanitarian help JOD is the front organization for the Lashkar-e-Taiba which is responsible for carrying out the 2008 Mumbai attacks that killed 166 people and plotting major terror attacks on Indian security personnel in Jammu and Kashmir. In an effort to be a helping hand to the authorities, an all-girls group in Afghanistan, Sirat province, attempted to make low-cost ventilators amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The project has not yet accepted by the government, but officials have appreciated the initiative. An award-winning robot team consisted of 6 Afghan girls has attempted to make pair down low-cost ventilators to make up for the shortage of the devices in Afghanistan amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The all-girl robotic team Afghan Dreamers is from the country's Western Herat province where the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases is on the rise after thousands of Afghan refugees returned from hard-hit neighboring Iran. The situation prompted the girls to embark on the project using car parts to produce alternative ventilators. But unfortunately, despite their well-intentioned efforts, the Ministry of Public Health says it cannot endorse the proposal due to safety concerns as of now. خاطر کردیم که این زودتر ساخته شو بیشتر مورد استفاده قرار بگیره این دستگاه ما با دکترها مشوره کردیم اونا احتیاجاتی که داشتن این بود که انبوبک که تنفس به مریض میده باید این به دستی نباشه بلکه باید توسط یک ماشین کار کنه Afghan health authorities have said the country has to buy 50 more ventilators apart from the 300 devices currently available Afghanistan at the latest recorded 1226 COVID-19 cases with Herat remaining the epicenter of the disease. Amid the surge in demand of protective suits to fight COVID-19, garment factories in Bangladesh have started stitching personal protective equipment suits 
for frontline workers like doctors, security forces in the country. Some factories in Bangladesh had previously been closed but reopened to only make the suits after a government order. A garment factory in Bangladesh capital Dhaka has started stitching personal protective equipment or PPE suits for doctors, nurses, soldiers and police in the country instead of their usual garments. Celebrity Garment Exports is among a few factories that are making PPE at the moment amid a shortage in the country. The factory had previously been closed but the managing director Muhammad Sharif Ahmed said workers are producing suits for a government order. মূলত আমরা এক্সপোর্ট করি বর্তমানে আমাদের দেশে চাইদার কারণে করোনা ভাইরাসের পিপি বানানোর জন্য আমাদের প্রতিষ্ঠানটি খোলা রাখছি তাই আমরা সকাল 8টা থেকে বিকাল 5টা পর্যন্ত আমাদের দেশের র‍্যাব ডাক্তার নার্স র‍্যাব আর্মি পুলিশ বিডিআর এবং সাংবাদিক ভাইদেরকে এই করোনা ভাইরাসের পোশাক দেওয়ার জন্য আমরা আমাদের প্রতিষ্ঠান সকাল 8টা থেকে 5টা পর্যন্ত খোলা রাখছি As Bangladesh is expected to lose billions of export revenues this fiscal year after retailers and brands across the world cancelled orders amid coronavirus outbreak, government has launched a 588 million dollar package to help companies in the crucial garment sector pay staff during the pandemic. As of Thursday, there were 120 deaths linked to the deadly virus and over 3000 cases across the country. Nepal Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli thanked Indian counterpart Narendra Modi on Wednesday for sending 23 tons of medical supply as a goodwill gesture to help the Himalayan nation fight COVID-19. The total COVID-19 cases in Nepal rose to 47 on Friday. Nepal Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli thanked Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday for sending 23 tons of essential medicines as a goodwill gesture to help the Himalayan nation fight COVID-19. Oli took to Twitter to express the gesture. PM Modi restated the support for the Nepalese government and said they would combat the coronavirus outbreak in solidarity. Acknowledging Oli's regards, PM Modi claimed that the relationship between both countries is special and said that the bonds are strong and deep rooted. The consignment of over 23 tons of essential medicines including hydroxychloroquine was handed to Nepal Health Minister Bhanu Bhakta Dhaka. Ye aushadhi main manta hu ki hamare deshon ke sahyog ka ek udaharan hai. Aur COVID-19 ko ladne ke liye jitna bhi hum deshon ne akele kiya, aapas mein milke kiya, dusro deshon ke sath milke kiya इंडियनिंग The number of recoveries is 7 with two discharges on Wednesday itself which has brought the number of active cases to 38. Udaipur district alone which has become the hotspot of the pandemic in Nepal has registered 27 active cases. More news from Nepal. Leaders of Nepal's Samajwadi Party and Rashtriya Janata Party on Thursday submitted application for the registration of their newly unified party People's Socialist Party. The unification deal between the two parties took late on Wednesday night. Leaders from Nepal Samajwadi Party and Rashtriya Janata Party on Thursday submitted application for registration of the newly unified People's Socialist Party. The leaders reached election commission to initiate the process of their unified party registration following their unification deal which they signed late on Thursday night. The announcement about the historic unification was made overnight by the country's former prime minister and co-chair of the now erstwhile Samajwadi Party, Babu Ram Bhatta Rai on Twitter, who shared the agreement signed between the parties. This came as rift among factions in the ruling party were increasing after President Vidya Devi Bhandari earlier this month issued two ordinances which relaxed provisions to split a party into two. The ordinances allowed leaders of a political party to split the party if they have 40% support either in the central committee or the parliamentary party. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.